planes coming overhead. Probably going to the Lake Lamal for water. There's just smoke all of the way around. This is in a village over from me. This is the closest fire to me. Not that's ever been, but today. There's two big fires in the area well, that I can see smoke billowing from. That one, which is the closest to me, which is in the village over Aldeuda Bishpul. And there's one more or less there. Where there's smoke coming up from, you can't really see much beyond the trees there. That one is Valde Prezeresh. So this one by me, Valde Prezeresh. And two nights ago there was a huge one just behind the hill in the village next to Pen uh, Penemakor called Benkurencia. And the winds just come up as well. So many firefighters are on the scene. Aerial resources six, four, and all the planes keep flying overhead to refill with water. It's always so incredibly stressful because fires and wind. Of course, this can just change direction. And between here and there, it's just farms. One never really knows. It's always a scary thing to see. Hello, good morning and welcome to a brand new video. And this is also the August farm tour. Before I start our little walkthrough of the farm for this month, I want to give thanks to the firefighters, the volunteer firefighters and all the aerial support, planes, water bombing, the fires here in central Portugal. In the last two days, we've had three big fires. One in Bencurencia just over the hill there and I could see huge puffs of smoke coming up behind literally the castle there. The second was in Val de Prezeres, Montelial. It was huge. That was yesterday. It started yesterday morning. It was finally extinguished towards the evening. And then one huge one started here. Well, it was a little too close for comfort. It actually started three villages over in uh, Jal de Pires, Aldeia de Bishpu. It then made its way to Aguash, which is the village over next door to where I am, which is usually about five, well, which is five kilometers away from where we are on the farm. But the fire came probably as close as two kilometers to the farm as the crow flies. Now, we were probably never in any real danger, but I could see the flames from here, from the farm last night. I don't like to take chances because fires, well, you know, you know how they spread and how quickly they spread. The ground is so dry at the moment and between here and where the fire was, there is nothing but farms and grasslands, dry grasslands. So that spreads incredibly quickly. The fire is still going. And I can actually see flames now. Oh my goodness. I'm going to pack a grab bag, pack things up and just in case get ready to evacuate. I can see fire, I can see flames now. I'm going to pack the car immediately. I made the decision to 
evacuate, take the dogs, pack a few things in the car and just get to a safer place when I could see the flames literally on the horizon. Can't really tell how far that was but it felt a little too close for comfort as I mentioned. So I packed us in the car, we evacuated the farm and actually we just went to the top of the village and got a really good viewpoint of the fire. That was never my intention, but it just so happened that <laughs> that happened that way. Um, yeah. But we, when it started looking like the fire was getting a little bit more under control, which was about 11 p.m. last night, we came back to the farm, very exhausted, but we had a good sleep. The fire seems to have been extinguished at about 3 a.m. this morning. So thank you to all the firefighters that did a tremendous, tremendous effort on that huge, huge fire last night and actually all three fires in the last two days. You guys must be exhausted, so we give thanks to you for that. We got very lucky last night or yesterday. A lot of other people didn't get as lucky and they have had to set a lot of their animals free to escape the fire. So we hope that everything is okay with you guys and that you get all your animals back safely and that you and your farms are safe as well. The fires were probably caused by the huge, intense heat wave that we had over the last week, which went into the 40s here. It was like an oven to be outside, even at night where nighttime temperatures hardly dropped below 30 degrees maybe in the very early morning hours for an hour or so so everything was just ripe for fires and it ended up that way but we're all safe we're all very fortunate and very very lucky to be here so with having said that thanks to the firefighters this is the august farm tour thank you that we still have a farm this is girl meets farm Let's start today's tour here by the flower bed actually um, and my white vines that hang here by the door. These are table grapes. Still looking really good this year even though we've just come out of another huge heat wave. My lavenders are still growing well my Gerber as well. Unfortunately something I think bent this beautiful flower. But the red one is growing. I've seeded some more of the bed with more of the red Gerber because the yellow one died quite some time ago. Shiva has not been feeling very good. We were at the vet for an ultrasound. I think he has some colon inflammation or colitis. And I'm thinking it's quite possibly me. We're just being having had a very stressful time, so I'm hoping that things calm down a little bit and now that the weather it will be calming down a little bit again after the heat wave. I'm hoping he will be feeling better soon again. Fortunately this year I never even got to the figs. I feel like they had a very short space of time where they were fruiting and then they were dry. I still have some pears going. And this year I had a, a really healthy production actually of pears. The baby 
oranges have started blossoming they do need some water it's been an incredibly hot week the moment I give them water they perk right up again today is watering day this peach tree has not really recovered very well from whatever infested it which I think could be fruit flies or a moth I will be treating it for next year all my peach trees in fact all the other fruits are now done this peach tree has actually re started recovering quite nicely it just needs water today's watering day the plum tree is also looking really good persimmon and my baby apple The veggie garden is at the end of its production. <laughs> I learned a lot from this summer's production, to be honest. Although this was my second summer on the farm, it was the first time that I grew any of my own veg. So it was a bit of a learning curve for me. I like to do things in small amounts just to build my confidence and just get a feeling for how things grow, what grows well, what they need, what am I missing, so that I can be better prepared for next summer. And that's exactly what I did here. So also my learnings include that I definitely need to put up shade netting for my summer veg <laughs> which probably means that I'm definitely going to be needing to put up some um, frost cover for my winter veg when I do plant them. My tomatoes did not grow well at all. All of them had blossom end rot and I did not even manage to harvest one without blossom end rot. My peppers did grow quite well. They didn't produce very big fruits, but the plants did grow and they're st all still alive. The zucchinis were possibly the absolute best growers in this year's harvest. And I was picking zucchinis on a near daily basis. When I got back from South Africa after being away for two weeks, I had those monster zucchinis and they were fantastic. I'm still eating zucchinis that I've been, that I've frozen from all of my harvest. Only these two plants are still going and they're even still trying to produce some more. So I'm gonna let them grow. I'm gonna let them see if they do wanna grow any, any more veg for me but the rest of them I've just let die off exactly where they are. The pumpkins also grew very very well and of four plants I had three pumpkins, three plants that produced veg and one of them is trying to possibly go for a second round so this is the only one still going and I'm gonna let it go and see if it's going to give me another pumpkin but the pumpkins were incredibly good i have processed them and i'm still eating them as well so that's definitely something i will grow again next year zucchini and pumpkin for sure my watermelon struggled from the very beginning i had four plants one of which died near immediately the one that I thought wasn't going to make it is the only one that's actually still alive and that currently still has a little bit of a watermelon. I'm hoping that grows into a fully shaped watermelon for me to enjoy. The other two plants, one I'm not even watering anymore. It did actually grow a baby watermelon but I saw that that had broken off some time ago and that plant is pretty much dead. The second one is very small and I don't think that's going to produce any fruit. So we have this one and we are keeping our fingers crossed for it. Next year I think 
some of the big changes that I will be making with the veg besides putting some shade nets on is definitely the compost worked incredibly well. I feel like I need to just continue doing a lot of composting during the, um, the growth season. I did add some but I didn't do it consistently so I feel like next season that's definitely something that I will be changing. Watering I did regularly, it does look dry now but we've just come out of a huge heat wave. Today is actually the first day that's not going to be over 40, it's going to be 38 so it's going to be close but uh, we're finally coming down. But um, I did water regularly, some mornings, some evenings, some both. They did love that, um, so I don't think that was the problem, but shade nets I think will probably be the biggest thing here for me. And next year I know that I can grow zucchinis and pumpkins successfully, so I will probably be getting a few more plants of zucchinis and of pumpkins, and let's see how well the watermelon does. Honestly, I'm actually surprised that this one hasn't picked it up and thought it's a ball because it's about the size of a, a tennis ball right now. The other thing that's done incredibly well are my strawberries this year. Last year they didn't do so well. This year I feel like I had some really healthy plants. Before we get there, these two peach trees, in fact all of the peach trees on the farm were really badly affected by that fruit fly or moth or whatever it is. This tree, unfortunately, it started leaning before I, was, before I went to South Africa and when I got back I noticed that some of its branches just had broken off. I think the tree is sick and I don't, I think it should probably go because it's leaning more and more and more and I think it's just gonna pull itself over. <laughs> if I don't intervene. So getting to the strawberries, this has actually been an incredible crop this year. These plants have been so so healthy and they've been doing so so well. I have been picking strawberries on a daily basis and every day I get one or two absolutely beautiful strawberries to enjoy with my breakfast. It may not be a lot but you know that they are incredibly sweet and have gone down an absolute treat. So sweet. Mm, delicious. That one probably could have gone another day. <laughs> Sometimes I get greedy. But now I know that I can successfully grow strawberries. I had six plants this year. Next year I feel like I will definitely buy a few more plants. I do have the pots for them. <laughs> so that I can have more strawberries every day. My apple tree is at the end of its production as well. The grapes that were growing on this terrace here over the wall didn't grow so well this year. I'm not quite sure why they didn't grow as well but it could possibly have to do just with the heat waves that we had this year. Although last year we had far more heat waves but I feel like last year I had more Grapes growing here. Let's go this way, boy. Last year we had heat wave upon heat wave upon heat wave, and when it came to grape harvest, I had pretty much 50% of my grapes left over for harvest that hadn't turned to raisins. Although we've also had quite a few heat waves this year, I feel like my grapes are far healthier. Although some of them have turned to raisins, I feel like I have more grapes this year than I had last year. 
that haven't turned to raisins. I mean, we were going to be doing the harvest earlier this week. But because we had such an extreme heat wave, we had to postpone it. So the grape harvest will be taking place this coming weekend, this weekend. The well has continued to decline and we are now firmly six blocks below Froggy Step. This is not my main well that, that feeds my house. I'm not actually sure, I've never actually measured how deep this well is. I should probably do that actually but so far in the year that I've actually been on the farm and the two summers that I've seen it hasn't reached the end yet but this is the furthest it has gone down in the two summers He spotted a cat. It's sunny and tucks. Olives are looking really good. Olive harvest is usually in November. I had a really good harvest last year and usually you don't get year on year great harvests. About I have 40 trees. <laughs> there they go. I have 40 trees, olive trees, on the farm and 20 of them I harvested last year. 20 of them had olives. These are the ones I did harvest last year and I can already see they are carrying some olives but there's not a lot. So I've heard that they alternate. So I'm assuming that the other 20 will have a bigger harvest this year. I'd also had all of my olives pruned last year, which does affect it. Although I didn't do a heavy prune, it shouldn't have affected their big productions. So we shall see. See Sunny sitting in the in the tree there. This is actually where they live, Sunny and Tux. Not sure if you guys if you can see him. He's all the way at the back of the courtyard there. Top terrace. A 
Apparently, as these guys start to raise in, which logically makes sense, there is a lot more sugar in the grapes, so some winemakers prefer it that they're looking a little bit more raisiny. Sugars help with yeast production, which helps the grapes ferment into wine. But as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I'm wondering if I harvest sooner, maybe I get less yeast because I don't like that taste in the wine. The quinces are still holding on quite well. They're meant to be turning a little bit more yellow than this. And this year I think I shall do something with them. Some of them are starting to get more ripe. So it's almost time to harvest some of the quince. As well. my vine quince and now you can really see that this is a wild a wild grape vine that was growing here it's not really meant for eating or using Before the heat wave came, I really did try my best <laughs> at um, trying to water my my vines. My theory worked, but unfortunately the execution was not as great as what I had planned in my head or what I had envisioned in my head. The hoses are a little bit so far gone that I need to replace them. There were just leaks springing up everywhere. So unfortunately that <laughs> just didn't work this year. I need to get back to the agricultural store and um, buy new hoses and a few more sprayers. Like I said, the theory works. I just need better equipment and then to put it all over the farm so that all of the vines can get watered up here and the lower terrace i may still do that before olive harvest just so that i can save more of my olives some of them are showing signs of lack of water but of course equipment is expensive so let's see My orange tree, the big one, is producing again. These will be ready probably for winter. And these are the wild grapes again. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my whites this year. I think I may just pick them and eat them. That's it for the August tour.
see you next month.